Hello everyone. I do hope you're all well. Can I extend a big welcome to those of you who've recently joined my channel. The royal family videos are proving quite popular. Now I had promised to put together a video on Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. I know some of you were disappointed that I've left them out of a recent video and so this one is especially for you. Now this is a couple that can elicit quite strong reactions from the public. So I just want to make it clear that I don't actually have a strong opinion on either of them. I just want to give it the best impartial look that I can. So we'll have a quick look at their natal charts, where they're at at the moment, and see what we can find out about the year ahead for this couple. They have very recently announced that they'll be producing a couple of new TV shows for Netflix. We're aware that Harry may well be visiting the UK in the month of May to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. And of course, underscoring all this, we know that Harry's father, King Charles, is undergoing cancer treatment. And whilst there are reports that he's responding well, we don't have anything official from the palace. So let's go off to the computer and have a look at this couple who generate so much publicity. And we'll be looking closely at Saturn, Moon and Chiron in this video. And so here we have Megan's natal chart. I know some of you use whole signs and some of you prefer quadrant systems. So I'm displaying both charts here. If we try to pick up on some of the key themes in Megan's chart, we can see that Cancer Ascendant, which can be very sensitive and pro-family. This means that the ruler of her chart will be the Moon. And this is where it all starts becoming very much more complicated. You can see her Moon in Libra on the IC of the chart and tightly interconnected with Saturn and Jupiter. This is a heavy cluster of planets Planets that fall near one of the sensitive parts of our chart, like the Ascendant, the IC, the Midheaven, the Descendant, all gain in strength because of that proximity. And so we can expect this cluster of planets to have a great impact on Megan's life. Now they are in Libra and Saturn is exalted in Libra. However, the Moon and Saturn are not a happy coupling. The moon is our most vulnerable innermost self and it does not work well with Saturn's cold, harsh limits and restrictions. These two planets, the moon and Saturn, are naturally found in the signs of Cancer and Capricorn, which are opposite each other and they do not join together easily. Ordinarily, that Libra moon would incline us to feel our most safe and secure when we are in a relationship, we may not work well with signs of direct aggression and we could prefer more gentle ways of interacting with each other. We like beauty and harmony around us and we could possibly feel most dissatisfied if we don't have a lifestyle which allows for that. But if we have Saturn around the area of our moon, we likely feel that there was never enough nourishment as a child. That is our perception, regardless of what the reality may be. We simply cannot get enough love. We never feel safe from rejection. And so we can live life expecting that people will let us down. And indeed, this will often be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because we didn't get topped up with enough love as we were growing up, we can be quite needy. We certainly learn early on that self-sufficiency is best and we may work hard. In fact, we can move mountains at work, but we have this persistent fear, which will often be unconscious, that there will be more disappointment and rejection. And so we try to control things around us. We try to control the environment, the people around us, the outcomes of any plans we make. Will having Jupiter nearby help ease some of this tension? Will it certainly bring some ability for bending and compromising? 
And if we view Jupiter as the planet which brings good fortune and opportunities, then Jupiter here in Libra could quite literally suggest good luck in relationships because it is in Libra the sign of relationships. But all of this is in a square to that natal Mars. Mars is in Cancer and Mars is not happy here. Mars is a hot and fiery planet. Cancer is a sensitive water placement. And so Mars finds it difficult to express its symbolisms here. If Mars is how we express our will, how we get what we want, how we show our anger, whether we can aggress, Cancer is retiring, feminine, negative, and is an uneasy place for Mars to be in. Square aspects create a tension dynamic in a chart. And so we can have no doubt that Megan will certainly go for the things she wants, but her methods will not always be direct or transparent. Between that difficult Mars and the fact that Moon is in Libra, expressing what we want clearly and openly may be a struggle. And it is with aspects like this that people may often need to resort to different methods of asserting their will and going for the things they want. Tools like manipulation and control may be easier to use and we would need to be on guard against this. Now if we look more closely at Saturn and Jupiter, these are two social planets. They're not actually classed as personal planets, but they can often feature in varying aspects in the charts of people who will reach positions of eminence or achieve great success in their field. One way of looking at this pair is to work out which planet of the two is in the lower degree. For example, Saturn here is around 5 degrees and Jupiter is around 6 degrees. Therefore, Saturn is in the lower degree and this gives Saturn the upper hand. And so, although the individual may rush to achieve big Jupiterian dreams and ideals, Saturn, time and time again, will bring them up hard against harsh realities. It will make us aware of boundaries and pull us back time and time again to being more realistic about what we can achieve. If it were the other way round and Jupiter was in the lower degree, then Jupiter would have the upper hand and the Saturnian breaks would be less harsh. We would then be able to expand on the more positive symbolisms of Saturn and Jupiter together. Jupiter would bring good judgment and success to Saturnian ideals. Coming back to Megan's case though, Mars is squaring this bundle. And Mars is in the Moon's natural home, the sign of Cancer. So the tension becomes even greater. Using whole signs, that Mars is in the first house. With Mars in the first house, our own agenda is paramount. There is a strong self-interest and we have no hesitation in striking out for the things that we want. The square aspect means we will often run into conflict because other people simply do not have our goals, our aims and aspirations, and we fail to realise this. So we run into conflict time and time again. There is a tremendous amount of frustration, of anger, of not getting our own way. Nonetheless, this whole dynamic in the birth chart will mean that we are driven to achieve. What of Megan's son? We can see it there in the sign of Leo. Leo, who needs admiration, validation, attention, creative outlets, that ability to shine. Mercury is close by and there's a very tight sextile between that Mercury and Saturn. So Megan has intelligence. Her organisational skills are good. Now this is a heavy Leo emphasis because we also have the North Node, nearby Mercury, amplifying all that Leonine energy. It's also not too far away from the Ascendant. So this need to shine is acute. And we can also think of Leo as being the showman, the entertainer. 
which ties in with Meghan's acting career. We would look to the fifth house for acting and dramatics and we can see Uranus there forming a very helpful trine to her ascendant. So we welcome change and variety. We may have a dash of eccentricity. There may be unorthodox creative outlets, but we need these as part of a varied and interesting lifestyle. And with all that Libra energy that we discussed earlier, we'd also want to have a look at Venus, which is a natural ruler of Libra. How is she placed? Well, Venus is in the third house, but she's in the sign of her fall. This is because Venus is about love and beauty, about self-indulgence even. And yet that Virgo backdrop can be cool, very analytical, highly discriminating, possibly to the extent of being nitpicky. And so Venus here cannot express herself easily. That Venus is also not strongly aspected. There's a sextile to her Mars, showing some potential for give and take and releasing some of the tension that Mars is experiencing elsewhere in the chart. Now we have picked up certain issues around control in that Libra stellium, but we should also note that Pluto is squaring the ascendant. Now people who have a natal Pluto squaring the ascendant often have an air or a quality about them. It's partly mysterious. There's a possibility of a certain tension in the air, something undefinable. But these are certainly not people to cross. They hate to give away their personal power to anybody else, and they will not stand for others trying to take control of them. So there may be problems in life. There may be challenges. These people do not bend gladly to the will of others, be they people or organisations or governments, and there can be problems with authority because of this. On the positive side, there can be a good deal of inner strength, but it does mean that progress in life may come with distinct and regular challenges. I have mentioned that Chiron is going to be part of today's discussion, but Chiron in Megan's chart is not strongly aspected. There's a sextile to her ascendant, so we know that there is, even to a small degree, some inner wound relating to appearance and the way Megan projects herself to the world. Chiron is in a yod formation with Pluto and Neptune, but many other people born around the same time as Megan will have this too. So we'll make a note of that sextile to her ascendant and we'll be returning to this very soon. Now if we have a quick look at Harry's natal chart, again we've got both the whole sign version and the Placidus chart. In fact the Placidus chart is probably the better of the two charts for illustrating why Saturn Moon are so important in this video. We can see that Harry's Moon is down there on the IC just a few degrees away from it, so most certainly conjunct to it. And Saturn is at the other end of the axis, up there on the midheaven, within a few degrees of it. We can go quite wide on orbs with this one, because it is the moon. Aspects to the sun and the moon often show up pretty strongly, even with orbs of 10 degrees. But in this case, the moon opposes Saturn by an orb of about 8.5 degrees. And we can be certain that this is a key feature in Harry's life. Because both of these bodies are conjunct angles, Saturn is so important because it is Harry's chart ruler. And the pairing of Saturn and the moon in an opposition context repeats some of the themes that were in Megan's chart. Themes which we can often ascribe to an early relationship with a parent often the mother, which was disappointing. It was distant. Our perception was that we did not receive the nourishment and the love we needed. And so there is an innate fear of rejection. We have difficulty in laying ourselves open to the possibility of more hurt. Now with the opposition, there can be a great deal of subjectivity with this. It may often play out in relationship problems, because the opposition has that first to seventh house dynamic. 
and we may struggle to be objective about our own behaviour. And so again, because of our fears of rejection, we can project a cautious exterior to people because we are scared of them becoming closer. People in turn interpret this as being a closed door. And so we are likely to be rejected again and to deal afresh with those same problems of disappointment, of feeling abandoned. I think anyone who can remember two young boys walking behind the funeral procession of their own mother would understand the tremendous emotional fallout for William and Harry. Moon Saturn aspects of all kinds can contain the seeds of great anxiety. And indeed, this is something that Harry has spoken openly about. However, we can also detach from our feelings quite easily if we pursue fields like business, politics, where there is a need to act with detachment. We have the potential to keep our feelings out of the work arena and achieve great success. And this could well be an area where Meghan and Harry are able to make future progress. In Harry's case, if we look at that Capricorn Ascendant, which can be very ambitious and very aware of the different layers in society of the career ladder, there are some strengths in this chart which would lubricate the rungs of the career ladder, so to speak, We have the moon exalted in Taurus. It trines that sun, which is in the ninth whole sign house. Now, the moon represents our emotions and the sun is representative of our identity, our core purpose. And the two are blending together so easily in practical earth signs, which aligns our purpose the direction we want to go, together with our emotional constitution, and we know exactly what we want and how to go about getting it. So there is a certain self-confidence and optimism here. Core parts of our self are working in harmony. We have an understanding of how to project ourselves. Our emotional and physical vitality is strong. We can draw people towards us relatively easily and we can use this charm and popularity to get what we want. The sun in Virgo is organised and practical. It likes stability and we have Mercury in Virgo as well, one of its natural homes and it forms quite a close trine with Jupiter. This is an aspect which brings some wisdom, optimism and it's also an aspect we would often find In the charts of people who are natural teachers, the mentors of the world, the coaches, it is very likely that Harry would be able to show people the ropes and help them to move forward. That Mercury is not without difficulty, although I believe it would handle the difficulties well. And this is because it is squaring Uranus and Chiron. It is in a T-square with the two. Now this ties in with some of the things that we already know about Harry. There is a possibility that he has an attention deficit disorder. There is certainly something about that Mercury which is wounded or damaged by Chiron in the areas of mental processing, communication, writing. That Chiron is in Gemini too, which is the sign of our processing and communication abilities. And so it is quite a highly strong Mercury, possibly one that picks up things very quickly and processes them at high speed, but which can sometimes be almost flooded by the tension from Uranus to the extent that it is overwhelmed and short-circuited with the stress of too much incoming too quickly at speeds with which we cannot keep up. Harry's Venus in Libra is in its own sign and harmony is very important yet we can see because of that square to the ascendant that this is quite an insecure venus no matter what our appearance actually is we may not feel happy or satisfied with it so we could have inadequacies around the way we look and we may also sometimes make concessions to people in order to keep the peace Now we do have a few things in the 12th whole sign house 
And we can see that Uranus is conjunct that sporty Mars in Sagittarius and that the Mars squares Harry's sun. So there's a certain amount of recklessness of expecting things to go our way and being frustrated when they don't. And Harry has spoken publicly as well about difficulties with anger management because of course Uranus and Mars together are quite explosive. And if we have laid these functions of our psyche in the 12th house of the hidden, of the unconscious, then they are out of sight. We may not have incorporated them into our conscious awareness of ourselves and they therefore become like a hidden enemy that is out of our control and flares up to bite us in the butt. And the square between the Sun and Neptune repeats the theme in Prince William's chart too, although I think his is the opposition. But we have difficulties with self-identity, with boundaries and purpose, with sensitivity, with focus and direction. And because this is an aspect with the Sun, this can sometimes say something about the father-son relationship, the availability of the father, and whether it was perhaps not possible for him to be a consistent and strong presence in their lives. Now we're going to take a quick look at Meghan and Harry's progressions. We're just going to pick up on the key themes in their progressions, or else this video will just simply become too long. For those of you who don't understand progressions, I'll just explain that this is a very efficient tool astrologers use to predict both external changes in a person's world and also their own internal emotional environment. In a nutshell, we move the ascendant and the planets in a chart forward by one actual day in our ephemeris for every one year of life that the person has lived. The sun will move forward by roughly one degree. The moon will move forward by possibly 11 to 14 degrees. The other personal planets will move forward too. The outer planets will move extremely slowly over the course of just one day. Now I've drawn this chart of pinhole signs and I want to draw your attention to the bottom left of the chart where all the planets' positions are laid out as they were when Megan was first born. We can see that the only planet that was in retrograde motion when she was born was Neptune. However, as Megan became older, a couple of the slow-moving planets in her natal chart actually changed position. This doesn't often happen in our lives, and when it does, it's extremely important. We'll look first at her Chiron, which was in forward motion when she was born. We can see from the progressed positions that Chiron is now retrograde. So at some point in Megan's life, Chiron changed its perceived motion from our Earth point of view. When did this happen? Well, Chiron turned retrograde when Megan was 24. I wondered what could have happened at this age. And my first search immediately brought up an explanation that claims to be Megan's own words. At the age of 24, she was still trying hard to break into bigger acting positions and was undertaking auditions. It was during these auditions that a casting director had told her to stop trying so hard with makeup and just to be her natural self. He made it clear to Megan that she was enough in and of herself and that he wanted less makeup and more Megan. And Megan claims that this was a big release for her, a landmark, a change in how she projected herself to the world. If we are to view Chiron as being our inner unhealable wounds, where we feel damaged, hurt, less than, then those director's words released Megan from some inner wounding when she was then able to heal, to understand that she was enough in herself. We must remember that, of course, Chiron in her natal chart is in a sextile to her ascendant, even with that less conflictual sextile aspect there would still be some wounding or insecurity around our appearance. And those words helped Megan to release this, to 
to move forward. Another planet which changed direction was Neptune. Amongst other things, Neptune is about creating an illusion, a certain appearance or facade that may or may not be rooted in reality. So what remarkable synchronicity we have when we discover that Neptune turned direct in late July 2011. This coincides with the time when Megan was 29 years old and the very exact month when she joined the cast of Suits, which was a major breakthrough in her acting career. And acting is, of course, our ability to project an illusion. It is not our real self. If we pull ourselves forward to the present day, we can see that Megan's progressed son is very slowly pulling away from a square to her natal Neptune. It is now almost a degree away from that Neptune. And I think we can pick up from this aspect that there will have been a lot of confusion of uncertainty for Megan in the last couple of years. If the sun represents our core purpose, our sense of self, it will have come under some pressure during this quite lengthy progression because Neptune disorientates, it obfuscates, makes things less clear. And one does get the feeling with Harry and Meghan that there has been a certain drop in popularity, that the things that they have worked towards over the last few years have not panned out necessarily as hoped. And so this may have thrown Meghan and left her with some confusion in terms of where she is heading to. This aspect would have perfected itself around May of 2023. And so its influence will be much less now and falling away all the time. Can we see any new energy coming along to take its place? I think Megan is going to become increasingly positive about something new. And this is because her progressed son, which is currently at 23 degrees and 14 minutes of Virgo, is just about to start entering into a sextile with her ascendant. This is allowing a degree of orb. And I think there will be a new positive outlet for Megan's energy, for her vitality, something which picks her up and presents new opportunities for her to express her solar nature going forward. And in fact, her progressed midheaven is going to be moving into an opposition with natal Uranus. In other words, her progressed IC will conjunct Uranus because, of course, the IC is opposite to the midheaven. The IC can represent our roots, our home. Uranus brings change. It can be disruption. Sometimes we can experience this as exciting, but more often than not, it's a little bit too much change at once. And so it can be jarring or too abrupt, at least in the short term. But there is no denying that we have change coming. This aspect becomes at its most intense, i.e. exact in early February of 2025. And so we need to keep our eyes on anything which is connected to the IC, including physical home, children, our roots, and sometimes, to a lesser extent, the father. There are further signs that 2025 will be key for Megan. And one of these is that her progressed ascendant, which is currently at 29 degrees of Leo, will change sign next year. And so Megan's expression will begin shifting and moving away from those more leonine symbolisms into the self-contained, cool, analytical attributes that we associate with Virgo. Health may become more prominent. An eye for detail and discernment will gradually become more important in Megan's life. A quick look at Megan's progressed moon month on month over the next year, which indicates where she is emotionally right now. It's moving through the sign of Aries, which is her 10th whole sign house. So we have a very dynamic, enthusiastic, emotional application to 10th house goals, which are our career. And indeed, there are quite a few ventures that Megan has been involved in during this period. 
As we speak, that progressed moon is opposing her natal Pluto. And so this is quite a difficult aspect where it feels a little bit like the emotional rug is being pulled from under our feet. Perhaps a feeling like our control is being taken away from us, of change, potentially a feeling of being emotionally threatened. Those are the enduring emotional overtones that Megan is in right now. There is a simultaneous trine aspect to her natal Neptune, so perhaps this is part of Megan wishing to pursue a dream, a vision that she has. And as we move through the months, we can see that that progressed moon will square her natal ascendant mid-year, during July and August. Megan is feeling oversensitive and touchy and things don't work to plan. As August unfolds, there could be an element of change or disruption by virtue of a quincunx to that natal Uranus. There could be unexpected developments which jolt and jar our world just for a few weeks. And as we move through December, the progressed moon will change sign from dynamic fiery Aries into the more settled security orientated sign of Taurus. It will stay in the sign of Taurus for some two and a half years now. And so our attentions will turn more to stability, to our finances and resources. We are also in the 11th whole sign house with the focus on friendships, on societies and organisations, on our life goals, our hopes and wishes for ourselves. However, before Megan can get too settled into this, there will be a difficult aspect formed between that progressed moon and transiting Pluto. Towards the end of this year, Pluto will have retreated back into late Capricorn and then moved direct. And so it will form a square with Megan's progressed moon. And so this will again bring up those same Plutonian themes of feeling like our emotional stability is under deep threat. We may feel our control is being removed from us and that unwanted or unwelcome emotional changes or the renewing and transformation of things around us is jeopardising our emotional stability. And is anything interesting happening in Harry's progressions? Well, if we look to his progressed Mars, it's currently at just over 14 degrees of Capricorn. And so we can see that it's pulled slightly ahead of his ascendant, which is around 11 degrees. When did that progressed Mars conjunct his ascendant? Well, with impeccable heavenly timing, that conjunction was exact in June 2020. This was the month when Harry and Meghan moved to California and marked the very important time of Harry's will to achieve, his drive, his desire to achieve things for himself, burst out from the 12th house onto the ascendant to begin its journey through his first house. His progressed son moved into the sign of Scorpio in early 2022. So we have this lengthy journey ahead when one of the general emotional overtones in the background will be that of transformation, of potential crises. It will be deep and bring around change, beginnings and endings. Issues of power and control and big money all are possible within this spectrum of Scorpio. We can also see that Harry's progressed moon is in the sign of Scorpio. And it's currently about 10 degrees ahead of his sun. So we know that Harry is in the progressed new moon phase. Like his father, King Charles, his last few years have been concerned with the endings of a cycle. The part of our lives where we often lose things that we took for granted. People, places, homes, what we do for a living, our state of health, all of these things may change as the soul reorientates us, ready for a major new life cycle. And so, of course, Harry's stepping down from royal duties, leaving the United Kingdom, all of those major life changes would have been taking place as an old cycle closed down. At this point in Harry's life, he may not be certain of the direction he is heading in. 
This can be a disorientating time because we don't necessarily feel certain of which things to pick up and move forward with. This is something that only becomes clearer in time as the moon moves further away from the sun. We do have a couple of new progressions becoming exact in the year of 2025, which does look like it will be a very active year for Harry and Meghan. His progressed Mercury is moving forward, also in the sign of Scorpio. It is approaching his natal Saturn and will make an exact conjunction to it in late March of 2025. But even in the months prior to this, it is likely that Harry will experience feelings of increased seriousness. The mood may even be sombre. Attention to detail, focusing in on a single goal. The application of our mental powers in a very self-disciplined, almost single-minded way. There may be some excess caution and pessimism too, and sometimes Mercury can literally bring us news. Another progression becoming exact at this time is when his progressed ascendant is going to square his natal Mars. And at times like this, we really do need to be on our guard against impulsivity, against aggression, against quick, rash, ill-considered actions. We need to guard against being impetuous and we also need to be on guard against accidents. This aspect becomes exact in March 2025 too. We can also see from Harry's progressed moon that he is, as we speak, undergoing his progressed moon conjuncting his natal Saturn. This aspect becomes exact in early May, but it has a build-up as it approaches exactitude and so we know that this is probably quite a difficult time for Harry in that it will be likely very hard working, very little time to spare, our vitality may be low and we may be experiencing disappointments or setbacks in some way. This can often be a few weeks when we pick up little colds and viruses because our resources feel quite strained. Harry has quite a lot of things moving through Scorpio at the moment and his progressed moon is no exception. It will also then move on to conjunct his natal midheaven around August time. And so midheaven, career, our worldly role, our status as the world perceives it will become more important then. Matters to do with our career will be under the spotlight. And it will be interesting to see what this month brings because, of course, the Midheaven is one of the very sensitive points in our chart, one of our four angles. Again, the Scorpio backdrop for his progressed moon marks roughly a two and a half year period in his life that can have some pretty heavy emotional developments in it. And so we can feel a little emotionally drained by the time the moon finally leaves Scorpio. Although in Harry's case, this will not happen until later in 2025. His progressed moon will make a gentle sextile with his natal sun, which will be felt towards the end of this year and become exact in January of 2025. The easier aspects between the progressed moon and the sun mark times when we feel more at ease. We can feel in tune with ourselves. We're more optimistic. What transits will this couple be experiencing during 2024? Well, we know that an important transit has already started for Megan. Transiting Saturn moving through Pisces recently started opposing her natal Venus. This is a transit that can be critical for relationships. We have to take stock of relationships around us, particularly our close personal relationships. More than ever, they require our realistic appraisal of how well they are serving us. We may need to make adjustments which we could find difficult because this is not an easy transit. And we must come to terms with the harsh practicalities of where our relationships are at. For some people, this is even the end of a relationship. 
transits by opposition can often mark a time when we make a decision and whichever way we look at it, this is often a painful transit. I notice that Megan will also be experiencing some difficulty from transiting Chiron this year. Similarly to the Princess Catherine, she will be experiencing some square aspects from Chiron. Princess Catherine's moon is in Cancer, as is her north node. In fact, her node is just a couple of degrees away from Megan's ascendant. Megan will be experiencing transiting Chiron, squaring her ascendant and opposing her natal Pluto. The connection with that natal Pluto by opposition will become exact later this May. And by July, Chiron will have continued in forward motion and involved her ascendant too, with less than a degree of orb, although not quite exact. And so Chiron will be raking up trauma from the past as represented by that fourth whole sign house, Pluto. It will be reinvigorating any issues that Megan may have to do with her appearance and her control of the people and her environment around her, which is something that she likely does as a result of historic emotional damage and trauma. And because Chiron will retrograde and revisit these positions even into 2025, this will raise a lot of hard work for Megan in terms of examining her emotional baggage, of revisiting old wounds, of feeling insecure. And under difficult Chiron transits, we can often find that fresh wounds are visited upon us in order to bring into our consciousness old historical pain that we may have buried until now. In fact, transiting Uranus will also be conjuncting her natal Chiron, an aspect which becomes exact in May next month and which will further compound this issue of our innermost wounds. Because of their age, both Megan and Harry are going to undergo some of what we call the generational transits. Those transits which we all experience in our very late 30s or 40s, the Uranus opposition to itself, the Neptune square, and in Harry's case, the Pluto square, as he is just a few years younger than Megan. I won't cover these generational transits during this video or it will become too long, but suffice to say that these generational transits can reorientate our consciousness, make us reevaluate what we want out of life, and they can sometimes usher in change. Finally, the North Node will transit over Megan's Midheaven in June this year. This can also usher in important new contacts or developments, in this case related to her Midheaven aims. And just out of interest, we know that Pluto is currently moving through the early degrees of Aquarius. And over the next couple of years, what will start happening is it will begin to trine Megan's natal stellium of her moon, Saturn and Jupiter down there on her IC. I think this will be a very powerful time for Megan, a time when she is able to make great leaps forward not entirely without difficulty because Pluto is a very deep transformative energy. So interesting times lay ahead for Megan. Now where Megan is experiencing some difficulty with Saturn transits during 2024, Harry is in a slightly different position. He will be undergoing a transiting Saturn trine to its own natal position because Saturn is in Pisces. It will trine that natal Saturn in Scorpio and then it will move on to trine his midheaven. And so this marks a time of stability, put in solid work, but for which there will be rewards. We will be able to plan, to prepare, to move forward with our Saturnian goals and our midheaven aims. That initial trine to natal Saturn has already started happening and it would have first become exact in March of this year. The trine to his midheaven will become exact in May of this year. But because Saturn will turn retrograde as the year unfolds, it will pass over those positions again. And then by direct motion, we'll make one final contact. So this marks a good few months when Harry can make 
remarkable, consistent progress. We do always have to put in work under a Saturn transit, but the positive aspects give us tangible, practical reward for the work. Will there be anything impeding Harry this year from Saturn? Well, yes, there will, because Saturn is also going to make a square aspect with his natal Mars there in the 12th whole sign house. And so this is going to put a spoke in the wheel because he may run up against unexpected setbacks, obstacles or barriers to success, which will be very personally frustrating, but which we have to contend with nonetheless. And so we may become aware in the last couple of weeks of April or the first couple of weeks in May of an impending difficulty. I cannot find confirmation of whether Harry will be visiting the UK during May for the Invictus Games ceremony and whether indeed a visit to the UK could be caught up with this Saturn-Mars blockage. We're also aware that we have that Uranus-Jupiter conjunction coming up in literally a couple of days time. Well, this conjunction is going to take place exactly on Harry's natal moon. Uranus, Jupiter and his moon will all be around 21 degrees of Taurus. Will this coincide with a time of surprise, a pleasant surprise, a sudden unexpected and positive development for Harry? Uranus has been making a transit to Harry's natal moon over the last year or so and Uranus always brings unexpected developments. It could even be that the news of his father's cancer was part of his whole Uranus moon transit, such as the level of unexpected developments and shocks that we can receive from Uranus. But where Jupiter has become involved, this speaks more of pleasant unexpected developments. I'll also add here a few solar arc aspects that will become exact for Harry this year. Solar arcs are a method of prediction by which every planet in the birth chart is moved forward a degree for every year of life. This happens regardless of whether it is a slow moving outer planet, the sun or the moon. They all move forward by one degree. It is an excellent method of prediction, but we do have to bear in mind that the energy of the planets involved could materialise in an event that happens any time in roughly a one year period. It is more likely to happen the closer that the aspect becomes to being exact. And in Harry's case, he has three important solar arc developments, which will be exact in three or four months time. The first of those is that solar arc Chiron will square his natal Venus in roughly three months time. And so issues to do with relationships or money as represented by Venus are going to become pivotal and some kind of wounding or healing will be triggered as a result of the solar arc. So we have Chiron Venus exact in roughly three months time. And at the same time, we have his solar arc Jupiter in a square aspect with his natal Saturn. So issues to do with consolidating on growth of contraction or expansion of solid progress. These will be themes too in roughly three months time. Lastly, solar arc Pluto will be conjuncting his natal Uranus and this will be in four months time. So we have the themes ranging from forced change, unexpected upheaval, great pressures being applied to our need for freedom and self-autonomy. These are all possible expressions of the two dynamics involved. We need to watch out for events in Harry's life around these few months. I hope you've enjoyed watching that. My next video has a very slight overlap with the royal family. It concerns somebody with whom the royal family had links of friendship. This includes Princess Diana, but Prince William and Princess Catherine have also extended the hand of friendship to this person. He is almost certainly wrongly being held in prison and being prevented from participating in politics. The support that his followers have for him is immense. And I am, of course, talking about Imran Khan. There was no doubt 
in the Pakistani elections which were held in February that this man receives outstanding and unprecedented levels of support from within Pakistan. I have seen brief glimmers of hope in the future of Mr Khan and this is what we'll be looking at in my next video. And so until then, take the very best care of yourselves. Bye-bye.